天非常有幸的请到金融福利公司的，那么现在是这个 aggregate 期期刊的副清华大学获得本科和硕士学位。那么随后呢，在这个新加坡国立大学获得了这个呃新国大和美国 MIT 的联合培养博士学位。那么自从二零一零年呢，加入新国大，建立了研究团队，主要的研究方向是聚焦在这个，处的相关的领域，展开了比较广泛的这个研究。近十年，呃，围绕金属纳米团处研究方向。那么，谢老师的团队呢，在 Nature Chemistry， 呃，啊、呃、，Nature Communication， 等 Jack 的 Angle 的，呃，国际的著名杂志发表论文两百三十余篇。那么，同时也是呃一位呃高飞影的这个作者，那个 S Index 为八十五，呃，连续五年被呃入选。嗯，这个高飞影的科学家，并且入选了这个皇家化学会会史。啊、嗯，那么下面我们就把这个时间啊，呃，交给谢老师。OK， 谢谢谢谢丁老师。那个，首先非常谢、哎、老师。哎，好好听听得见是吧？<笑>我这不太听见。嗯，啊、哦、啊，您开始，您开始。嗯，好，可以听见是吧？啊，好嘞，好嘞。那个首首先，那个各位老师、同学，大家上午好。首先非常感谢丁老师的邀请，然后让我有机会给大家在网上分享一下我们课题组在过去十年嘛，在金属纳米团处方面，特别是纳米团处的生物应用方面的一些工作。然后我看到这个这个这个论坛叫高端制剂论坛，所以我就诚惶诚恐，因为。我自己本人并不是做高端制剂的，我自己本人主要是做材料，做金属纳米材料。但希望今天通过那个一个我们简单的一些汇报，能够让那个介绍一种一种新型的这种材料吧，我们叫分子材料，就是我们说金属纳米团处。然后希望后面就是有些老师或者是同学，觉得我们这种新。分子材料那个金属纳米团处，然后很有趣，然后能够更加深一些一些后面的一些后续的合作，特别是在高端制剂或者是别的 pharmacy 方面的工作。然后过在那个那个疫情疫情过程中就很很久没有用中文做报告了，所以可能很多的那个专业词汇都忘记了。在后面的那个我的报告，可能我就简单的用那个英文给大家简单的汇报一下。我们课题组在金属纳米团处方面的一些工作，然后因为我想借助这个平台，可以简简单跟大家简单介绍一下它的，主要是它的它的设计啊，它的合成，然后这个生物方面的应用，我们可能就是在最后面的时候，我们会简单的去 highlight 一下它的一些生物方面的应用。OK， 这后面我可能就用那个英文给大家简单介绍一下我们在这金属纳米团处方面的工作。喂喂喂。Very good morning. So sorry, I, I will I will just uh, use the English to discuss our recent work in engineering meta nanocluster for biomedical applications. So this is our molecules. The so orange here is the metal actins. It can be gold, it can be silver, or can be copper, right? And yellow here is the organic ligands. Like if we use the Thai ligand, so yellow here is sulfur. So these molecules is the matter inside, and then they have the organic molecules on the surface. So our molecules is very small; it's about one nanometer, and we can know the molecular formula of these materials. So, for example, we know how many matter atoms inside, and how many ligands on the surface of these particular molecules. And this is a functional molecules. And these functional molecules, similar as any other molecules right, or drugs, it has a very unique, we call a physical, chemical, and also the biological properties. So later I will discuss. So what are the unique physical, chemical, and biological properties? And we can use and to design like the probes or to for biomedical application, for example, for therapy application, diagnostic applications. So if you want to realize a uh, very well control uh, high performance of 
the properties or or, or the applications or the properties of these molecules. So we, we may need to design a very efficient uh, mixer to precisely synthesize these molecules. Right? So we call a precise synthetic chemistry. So the meaning of this precise synthetic chemistry is at the atomic level, we can control the size, composition, surface, and structure of these particular molecules. Okay, then we can control the physical, chemical, and biological properties, and then we can use it for the different applications. And if we want to design a precise synthetic chemistry, so we may need to understand the formation processes of these particular molecules, right? So we need to unravel reaction pathway. So this is uh, one of the key topic I will discuss. And today we call a total synthesis of these functional molecules. So we can use the total synthesis concept for these particular molecules to design a very efficient synthetic protocols to produce high quality of these molecules. And then we can use these molecular materials for the different applications, for example, for pharmacy, right? And then for other biomedical applications, and we can also use for like, like catalysis application as well, okay? So for these particular molecules, and we know we want to do the total synthesis. So actually the concept of the total synthesis is from the organic chemistry. So you know, organic chemistry is very powerful. So it can easily use like four common elements the hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and then to create unlimited molecules, like small molecules like the drugs, right? If you are working in pharmacy, definitely you know. So you can use a total synthesis to produce unlimited functional like uh, organic molecules like drugs or uh, com like large molecules like the polymers or complicated molecules like biomolecules like DNA or protein. Right? But if you check our table, the periodical table. So metals are very different from the organic like, molecules. And for metallic elements, so we know the majority of elements are metals. But the metals, the majority of materials are in crystalline structure. Like we know gold, right? We know silver. The majority of them are in crystalline structure. So a lacking of the molecular like structure diversity. So in the past 10 years, or now, now it's 13 years, uh, right after I joined NUS, so we would like to use a very common like metal elements, like gold and silver, and then to create, we call a universe of the metallic molecules. So it's similar as the organic molecules. And these molecules, they have a molecular formula, they have a molecular structure, but more importantly, these molecules have a molecular properties. And then we can use the properties and functions for the different applications, right? So next you may ask, so what are the properties we are looking for? So, or why we are interested in like these molecular materials or metal nanoclusters. So for the materials, and we are interested in a particular materials, it's not simply they are small, right? Or they are very beautiful is simply because there's some functions or there's some unique physical, chemical, and biological properties that we can use for the different applications. So this is similar to our metal nanoclusters. And for the metal materials, they have this, we call a size-dependent properties. For example, optical properties is size dependent. So we can see, right? If there are different size of these materials, they may show a different color. So let me give you one example. Like we can use a gold as an example. So we know for the bulk gold is yellow, right? But when we decrease the size of these gold materials, like to nanoscale size region, so we start to see the different gold solution. For example, we ha can have a gold solution, the, the red gold solution, we can have a blue, we can have a black gold solutions. So these are from aggregations of thousands of gold atoms or even more gold atoms. So they form the gold nanocrystals. So these gold nanocrystals, they have this like continuous electronic states and they have very interesting the surface plasma resonance properties or SPR properties, right? 
So I believe Pro Professor Ding is an expert in you know, gold nanocrystals. Gold it gold can use this resonance. optical properties for many different applications, a pharmacy applications or other biomedical applications. And if you can control the shape, size, and composition, you can control the properties of these like, gold nanocrystals. So if you still remember your high school chemistry, right? And so we know for a single gold atom, so actually it has this discrete electronic states. So the next question we may ask is, so what will be the transition between a single gold atom, discrete electronic states to these thousands of gold atoms, continuous electronic states? So the transition is the materials I will discuss today is the aggregation of several gold atoms. So these are the gold nanoclusters. Uh, typically, this cluster has less than 100 atoms. The size is about one nanometer or below one nanometer. Okay. So for these clusters, similar as the semiconductor, it has the discrete electronic state. So it's different from these gold nanocrystals that do not have continuous electronic state. For the clusters, they do not have this, like, like different from the larger bra, they do not have this SPR properties but they do have some molecular-like properties, like clusters, now they can show fluorescence, right? So that nanocrystals or this like gold ring, right? Do not show fluorescence at all. But for the clusters, so like these samples, right? So under the UV light, you will see, they can show strong fluorescence. So they have a very unique optical absorption properties. They also have very unique catalysis properties as well. So like this cluster, majority actants right, will be on the surface. So it can serve as active site for the different applications. So as a materials chemist, so if he can control the size, composition, surface, and structure, and then we can control all these properties right, at the atomic level or molecular level. So if we can control these properties and then we can design a better materials for the different applications, like pharmaceutical applications or other biomedical applications or catalysis applications. Okay. So for these clusters, and one of the properties and my group are interested in is this fluorescence properties. And you see these molecules, molecular materials, is a very promising optical materials and that can be used for the different applications. And if it, it can control like the core of this cluster molecules, like the core is a metal, right? Can be gold, can be silver. And the share of these like, like clusters and the share is like the protecting ligands together coordinate with some of the metal atoms. So they form this, we call a core share structure, right? So we can control the molecules, the structure of these molecules, and then we can control the interactions of this metal nanocluster with light. So they can show the different optical absorption, photoluminescence. They can also show, like have a very unique interaction with polarized lights. And they can also, light can also induce some of the reactions of this metal cluster. And then you can use the, the optical properties for the different applications. For example, the luminescence properties you can use for bioimaging application, biosensing applications, and you can use it to diagnose the disease, right? Or you can also use the cluster, combine the cluster, you know, if you use the noble metals, noble metal are very good catalysts. So you can use the catalytic properties and together with the optical properties. And then we can use to construct, for example, photocatalysis and for different application as well. So you can also use this cluster and then to mimic the enzyme for biocatalysis as well. So later we'll discuss a little bit of uh, design of these molecules for the different type of applications. So for uh, luminescence properties, so actually the luminescence properties of the clusters, so it's, yeah, 10 years ago, or now it's more than 10 years ago. So we got the inspiration from Professor Ben Zhong Tang. So now he's from Hong Kong University, the Chinese University of Hong Kong at Shenzhen. So he coined this a very beautiful concept of aggregation induced emissions or AIE. So we found out AIE can also be applied to 
these luminescence methanol clusters. So we have developing, like we call it AIE type luminescence methanol clusters. So for the aggregation induced emission, so it's from the words, right? Aggregation induced, that indicates if you aggregate the molecules, the emission will increase, right? Or enhance, or if dissociate the molecules, the emission will decrease, right? Or luminescence will decrease. So they have this reversibility. So I, we can use this uh, very simple like uh, video to show the uh, reversibility or this AIE properties of this like go one tighter complexes or very small uh, complex molecules. Right? And if you aggregate these molecules in a solid form, so we show a very strong luminescence and let me see, interchange to. And if you display the water and dissociate these molecules, the luminescence disappear. And if you spray a spec solvent, the external, so it can induce the aggregation, the luminescence will come back, right? And if dissociate and then luminescence disappear, and this gives us a very simple the idea. So the aggregation can induce the emission of the particular molecules. And then we can use this to design the luminescence by methanol clusters. For example, we can have a different type of design. We can aggregate these like, go one type of complexes on a cluster surface to increase their luminescence. We call it at a single cluster level. Or we can aggregate the clusters right, to form like cluster aggregations. So this is beyond single cluster level. So we can further improve the luminescence of methanol clusters, or you can design the different motif on the cluster surface and then to further increase the, to adjust the luminescence properties of these methanol clusters. So these two are work from uh, 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 Dr. Wu Zhennan. So now he is the professor in Jilin University. So the first work was from uh, Dr. Luo Zhentao. So now he is the medical doctor in Singapore General Hospital. And if for methanol cluster, because they show a very strong luminescence properties, they are very small, they have very good biocompatibility, and they, the hydrodynamic diameter of this cluster is very small as well. So we call it have a renal clearance properties. They have a rich surface chemistry that we can play with, and we have cooperation with Professor Xiaolong, uh, Professor Song, and Professor Yang from Fuzhou University to contribute a review article to discuss this very small methanol cluster and together with other very small molecules, molecular lab materials. So they are very promising, these luminescence probes. They can be used for the bioimaging applications. And this type of materials, that can be used for a lot of biomedical applications and of course can be used for the pharmacy applications as well. So these are a very general uh, brief introduction of methanol clusters, all these molecular like like molecular materials. And next I will discuss the details of our research in this particular field. So we are interested in, we are very focused, we're just working on a particular molecules, we call them metallic molecules or atomically precise methanol clusters. So this cluster can be used for many applications, like biomedicine applications, like human health, uh, even catalysis applications. So they are very promising applications. But if you know if you want to have very consistent performance in these applications, so we may need to provide a high quality of these materials. Eh? So if you want to provide high quality of these materials, we need to have understand these particular molecules and to develop a very efficient synthesis method to produce these molecules. And we need to have a continuous state, right? This the nutrition that can support all these applications. So these are one of the topic I will discuss today. We call it cluster chemistry, right? So my group are interested in two topics. The first one is for a material synthesis. So we are trying to develop a high efficient synthetic methodology and that can scale up. We are trying to understand this methodology as well 
to control the size, composition, surface, and structure of these molecules at the atomic level. So of course, it's at the molecular and atomic level, right? And then we can have high quality of molecules, materials that we can use for the different applications. So the second one is for fundamental properties. So I, I, I know if you are working on like applications, right? So these are all promising applications. So if you want to use a particular molecules, for example, you want to list, use these materials or these molecules. So for these applications, we know the challenges in these applications. So they're looking for the functions, right? Or the properties of these molecules. And then we can use to design these like functional materials for all these applications, right? But for these particular molecules, metanol cluster, some of the fundamental properties are not very well understood. So for example, fluorescence, optical absorption cluster structure. So my interest is to, at the molecular level, we are trying to understand uh, some of these fundamental properties like fluorescence, optical absorption, and cluster structure. And this slide summarizes the uh, the uh, research topics and my group are working on in the past 13 years. So we have been working on the design of these ultra small metal nano clusters and for different applications, a uh, biomedical application in the past 10 years. And in the next uh, recent three years, we are working on a little bit of these catalytic applications and from material synthesis, materials design and understand fundamental properties and theory applications. So for today's my talk, I will first like discuss the, our recent like, like developments on the material synthesis. And this is, as, as I mentioned, is very important for the applications. So if you want to have high quality or high performance or very consistent appli performance applications. So you may need to have very high quality of these materials. So you want to have very high quality of these materials, you may need to understand how to produce these molecules, right? So we will share some of our recent thoughts on a synthesis of these particular metanol clusters or these molecule materials. And I already like, discussed a little bit of the fundamental properties, like luminescence properties. So I will skip the details of these luminescence properties. So in the second part of my talk, I will just skip highlight some of the biomedical applications of these metanol clusters. Okay, so these are the structures of my talk today. So first we are discuss, go back to like the chemistry, right? Or synthetic chemistry. So I believe if, if, if you're working on like material synthesis, or you're working on even for organic molecule synthesis or a drug uh, molecule synthesis, so you often have like these particular questions we will, we will discuss here and we call it scientific questions in material synthesis. Right? We use a cluster as an example. So if we, we, we can synthesize very easily, synthesize a particular cluster as an example, I have a 25 gold atoms and 18 tyrant ligands. So yellow here is a gold atoms and this uh, brown here is a sulfur, so it's a tyrant ligands. So using a very simple method, like you can use the gold ions and adding the protecting ligands and the solvent is in water and you can add in a reducing agent, okay? So this reducing agent, that can reduce the gold ions and then to form gold atoms. And these gold atoms, they aggregate to form small clusters. And inside this reactor, you can continue to see the color change, right? From yellow, orange, right? To brown and reddish brown. And after 10 minutes, the reaction is very fast. So after 10 minutes, if you open this reactor, and then you can have this very high quality of these materials. But the questions you may ask is, so what exactly happening inside this reactor, right? So we know the inputs of this reactor, we know the outputs of this reactor, but we don't know what exactly happening inside this reactor. So we just see the color change over the reactions. So definitely there's some chemical reactions inside this reactor that can help us to finally produce this 
particular molecules, right? So this is a very open questions, and we often see we call in precise synthetic chemistry, not simply for methanol cluster, can be for a gold nanoparticle as well, or for other inorganic nanostructure materials, or even for the organic molecules. Right? So we would like to ask what exactly is happening during the formation of these final products. So we ask ourselves the questions. So for example, so what are the key intermediates towards the formation of these final products, right? All the way from the precursors. So can we identify all these key intermediates towards the formation of these final products? So if you can identify the key intermediates towards the formation of these final products, the next step we may ask is, can we write down the step-by-step -step reactions along the synthetic rules of these final products? Right? So this is similar as a total synthesis of the organic molecules. So we can write down 20 steps and to produce our final products. So can we do similar things for inorganic nanostructure materials right? or metal nanoclusters? So if we know the key intermediates, we can write down step-by-step -step reactions so we have a very good understanding of the formation processes of these particular molecules. Then we can design a very efficient mixer to precisely control right? the composition the size and structure of methanol cluster at the atomic level, okay? And more importantly, so this is very important for inorganic nanomaterial synthesis, we call it a predictable manner. So predictable manner, the meaning is, so if we design a particular protocol, so before we run our reactions, so we already know what exactly are the materials we can produce, right? So this is a very difficult or very challenging for like inorganic synthetic chemistry or inorganic nanomaterials. Right? And the final step is, can we achieve the total synthesis of the methanol cluster? Right? So I believe if you're working on the drugs, you know how important of this total synthesis, right? So I just give you one example. So this is a quinine, right? So it's a very important like uh, anti-malaria -ma drugs, right? So it's a very complicated molecules. So for these complicated molecules, so you can use a two very simple precursor and then to design more than 20 steps to precisely produce these molecules, right? And more importantly, we know all the steps, right? The reactions towards the formation of these particular molecules. So actually the concept we propose in cluster is got inspiration from the organic molecules, the total synthesis in organic molecules, and especially for a drug synthesis. So we ask ourselves, so for a cluster synthesis, so can we achieve similar uh, precise control? And if you go back to pre pre previous slides, you will know the key is to identify the key intermediates towards the formation of final products. Right? And we propose a very simple mixer. So we need an in-situ or real-time monitoring uh, techniques that can help us to identify the key intermediates and towards the formation of final products. And we propose the real-time mix spectrometry. Again, this are uh, often used in analytical chemistry, organic chemistry, and even for the pharmacy. Right? So mass spectrometry is very powerful in, in organic molecule synthesis as well like methanol clusters. So if you can use a real-time max spectrometry, so we can directly fuse the reaction solution to the max spectrometry. And we can identify all the key intermediates. And we can reveal the reaction kinetics dynamics at a molecular and atomic level. And with this understanding, and then we can unravel reaction pathway right, for all species. So actually our platform is very simple. So it's, it, it, I can discuss in this video. So it's, this is the video. We use the real-time max spectrometry to monitor the formation of one particular cluster like AU25. Okay. So it's before the reactions, so you know these are the peaks that are related to a particular molecular formula. If you initiate the reactions, so for example, you're adding the reducing agents, so we will start to see some of the peak disappear 
right? So intermediate disappears, now the peak uh, increase and the peak related to the final products are uh, continue increase. And then we can know like right, the formation process of this particular product. Right? So it's similar as we can watch the formation processes of this cloud, uh, molecule, molecule, the uh, materials, but now we have a molecular formula information. So we analyze all this into uh, max spectrometry, and then we can review the reaction chemistry at the atomic level. So for example, it, for this particular cluster, the final process is AU25 SR18. So can identify all the key intermediates towards the formation of these products. And we can also know the time dependent abundance of all these intermediates. And then we can analyze, right? So for example, if there are two intermediates, the abundance decrease and one intermediate increase, that should have some correlation. So through analysis of this, then we can write down the step-by-step -step reaction towards the formation of this final products. And we can also identify the different reactions, a reduction reaction, addition reactions, or other reactions involved in the formation of these molecular materials. So this, the real-time max spectrometry, and together with like uh, tandem max spectrometry and also the optical properties, a uh, UV based absorption spectrometry, uh, they can provide us a very useful information to help us to understand the reaction dynamics and reaction kinetics and um, through the formation or conversion of these like cluster uh, molecule like uh, mo uh, materials. Okay, so these slides I will summarize my first talk and we call the precise synthetic chemistry. So we coined our concept in 2018 and in YT accounts. So we call the total synthesis of metallic molecules. So this is similar as the total synthesis of the drugs, right? Or total synthesis of the organic molecules. So we are trying to, at the atomic level, to control this molecule, right? metallic molecules, right? So in this slide, I summarize our key findings by using this very simple platform, the real-time max spectrometry and tender mass and also the optical properties and sometimes the luminescence properties to understand some fundamental questions we are trying to ask right, during our research. Okay? So I just ask questions and the detail, the technical parts, I will just skip the technical parts. Okay? So you are interested in technical parts, so we can discuss after my presentation, or you can send me the email as well. Okay. So for our clusters, so we know we can synthesize these particular molecules, like AU25, SR18, right? I have 25 gold atoms, and they have 18 the tightly ligands, like this brown is sulfur. So we can design a different mixer, so like you can use uh, gold ions, very simple, adding a tightly ligand, protecting ligand, and in water, so our clusters, because our, we target the biomedical applications, so it's the solvent they are using in water, so we're adding a reducing agent. So when you're adding a different type of reducing agent as well, so when you're adding a reducing agent, so this reducing agent will reduce the gold ions to form the gold atoms. Right? So the questions you may ask is, so how will these gold ions to be reduced to form a gold atom. Okay. So how will these gold atoms aggregate to form small cluster? And how will this small cluster grow to form a bigger cluster? So why the final products in our synthesis is AU25, not AU24 or not AU26, right? So what are these we call a reduction growth process? So can we understand this reduction growth process at the molecular and atomic level. So we have demonstrated we can use this very simple method to understand the reduction growth process. So similar as the organic molecules, right? And for the organic molecules, if we want to diversify the properties of these molecules, so we can design 20 steps to synthesize these molecules. And after that, you can use molecules as a precursor. And then to design another 20 step, for example, right? to 
further diversify the properties of these molecules. So we can do the same for methanol clusters. Like we synthesize this cluster, we can use it as a C, small cluster, right? And then to further grow larger clusters. And for example, if we have a girl AU25, you can design a C-mediated growth to grow this AU44. And the questions you may ask is, so what exactly are happening during this C-mediated growth, right? So again, we can use this platform trying to understand the processes at the atomic and molecular level. So we can go further. So we have this large cluster and then we can use it as a C and then to further grow. And then we can see the gold nano crystals. And here we can understand nucleation crystal growth. Right? So this is a one line. We are very interested all the way from precursor, small cluster, large cluster to nano crystal. So another very important like topic for the total synthesis is if we have clusters, for example, so we want to modify the property of these clusters and we can also through the change, right? Some of the elements inside these clusters. So for example, if you want to adjust the catalytic properties of this cluster and then we can do the alloy or we can adjust the biological properties of this cluster, we can also do it. Right? integrate a second uh, metal elements inside our clusters. But the questions you may ask is, so if uh, this second metal elements, so whether you will replace these elements in this position or this position or in the center. So if you have two type of uh, metals inside your clusters, so can we control the number of these two type of elements precisely, right? Or if you have these two type of elements inside, can you control the positions of these two type of matter, matters, right? So this is related to, we call precise alloy chemistry. And if you want to develop precise alloy chemistry, you need to understand this alloy chemistry, right? Or processes, and we can use our platform to understand this alloy chemistry. So similarly, for this cluster, Another very important component is the ligand on the surface of these clusters. So this ligand, they can have a different functions. So for example, if we want to use a cluster for biomedical applications, so we need our materials to target the cancer cells, for example, right? So if we want our materials to target cancer cells, so we may need to replace some of the ligand on the cluster surface by the ligand, the bioprobes, that can target the cancer cells, right? And then this can be achieved by the ligand exchange reactions. For example, you have a, a ligand A here, so you have ligand B coming. So this ligand B, they can replace this particular ligand A, right? Or they can replace here. And look, or if there are two types of ligands on our cluster surface, so we can we control the ligand landscape, right? So we call a precise ligand engineering. So we can control the number of these two type of ligands and also control the position of these two type of ligands. Like if A and B, they like each other, so they may form a random structure on your cluster surface. So if they don't like each other, so A will be here, right? And B will be the other side. So they have phase separation of these two type of ligands. So we need to understand these ligand exchange reactions to help us to precisely and do we call a surface engineering. So another topics, so we are, have an interest is to use the cluster similar as a molecule, organic molecules. So if you have a high quality of these molecules, we can use it as a unit and then we can save assemble these molecules, right? So when you save assemble these molecules and we can form the metal materials like super crystals. So we can do the same. So if you have a clusters, you can through the several assembly chemistry, you can produce the super molecules or super crystals. And how can we control the properties, structures, size of these super crystals? Right? So you need to understand the several assembly processes of these molecules. Okay. So these are some of the fundamental questions. And we in the past 10 years, so we use a very simple platform together with some simulations and to help these uh, open questions in precise 
synthetic chemistry. So next, I think I will spend several minutes just to introduce uh, one like our recent, uh, you know, re recent topics and using this Go twenty five SR eighteen as an example and for the several reactions we have tried to understand. So I will skip the details of these reactions. Okay, so this is another uh, accounts we contribute uh, two years ago. So we call it derivatization chemistry of the gold nanoclusters. So again, it's, it's from the organic chemistry. So for organic chemistry, we can use our products as a precursor, right? So like we can use this AU25 SR18 as a precursor. And then we can design a different derivatization chemistry to convert this cluster to another functional molecules, right? So for example, if we can design isomerization reactions, and then we can convert this AU25 SR18 to another AU25 SR18, and they have a different molecular structure, right? And this, they are formed different isomers. So that different molecular structure, that different molecular properties, right? So similarly, we can do the ligand addition or ligand removal and to convert this AU25 SR18 to AU25 SR19, right? So they can precisely add on another ligand on our cluster. And then they have a different structure and different properties as well. So we can do the several assembly or we can do the alloy reaction, right? So, so we can alloy in our gold or silver. So we can alloy the different metals inside our molecules and then to control and their properties, right? Or redox reaction as well. So these are, uh, uh, one of the, uh, 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 the recent developments of our, my group we call the Tuan Chu Yan Sheng Hua Xue. So next I will just discuss, spend a very short time to discuss like, the five reactions we have been working on. The first one is alloy reactions. So again, we can use this very simple platform to understand. So how will metal atoms, like gold atoms, and replace silver atoms on a cluster surfaces. So we find out the gold will first replace on the outer layer of material of the silver, and then gold will go inside the second layer, and finally gold will go inside the center, right? So we call for this silver 25 nano cluster, the heart, the center belongs to the gold, gold atoms. So this process is simply thermodynamic driven processes. Okay, so I will not, not discuss the details of this study. So second reactions is the isomerization reactions. And for the clusters, and you're protected by the organic ligands. And we can use the ligand body of this organic ligand interact with some other organic molecules. Like for example, we can add in a surfactant like CTAB. So this surfactant has some reactions with our ligand body. And if you're adding a surfactant, it can rectify the surface of the cluster. So it rectifies the surface of the cluster and it can induce the structure change of these gold nanoclusters. So for example, if you have this red gold 25 nanoclusters, you're adding a surfactant, CTAB, an herbal reaction because of rectify the surface, you can induce this gold 25, red gold 25 to the green gold 25. And if you remove the ligands and you relax the surface of this cluster, and then this green go 25 will go back to the red go 25. So this is a reversible processes. So this gives us the information is if you want to change the structure of the clusters, you might not need to have a direct interaction with the core. You can just add on the surface, right? We call it chen yi fa or dong chen shen, right? So you, you add on the surface and then this rigidity of the surface that can induce the structure change inside the core and then to, to, to induce this isomerization reaction. So I will skip the details of this isomerization reaction. So similarly, and the uh, uh, number three reactions is we call it etching reactions or the stability of the clusters. So you are working on, you are know, use materials for the pharmacy, pharmaceutical application, biomedical application, the stability is, is a very important I mean, consideration. Right? So for clusters, so they are relatively stable in solution, but in the presence 
of that exile, excess like the the uh, tire ligands, the uh, this ligand they can etching the cluster, so they can like break down the clusters, right? So it's really like to understand, because if you understand etching reaction, you can produce the cluster have a higher stability, right? In solution and to cater different applications. So we use, we are trying to understand is the processes. Cause the common understanding is or the etching is the breakdown processes. So you have a large cluster. So during the etching, the size will become smaller and smaller, right? So we use our platform to identify all inter intermediates in 30 days, identify the intermediates and then to know the time dependent abundance. And we find out there's very interesting steps for the etching of these particular clusters. So one is very common one, we call it decomposition. So the size is continued decrease. But when the size decrease, we find out a second uh, pathway or stage. So we call the recombinations. So this size will continue increase during the etching. So like we have AO18, so through this isoelectric addition, so the size will increase. So this real time or in situ characterization techniques can help you to monitor the processes and then to find out some hidden reaction pathway, right? Okay, so I will skip the details of this as well. So we call is like if you want to stabilize your clusters, first you would reduce the size and then through this isoelectric additions, you can increase the size to have an even better stability of those clusters. So we can also do the legal addition reactions. Like this particular clusters, they have a free electron. So we carry one negative charge, we can oxidize it to form this neutral charge cluster, further oxidize to carry one positive charge, and it can react with one negative tidal ligand. So now we can add on one tidal ligand. Right, through these oxidations. And this is a reversible. So we're adding a reducing agent. So this AU25 SR18 can go back to AU25 SR, SI19, go back to AU25 SR18, right? And this is a reversible processes. So this gives us information for these molecules. And if we can use it for particular applications, like biomedical applications, so we can precisely control the size, the matter, and also the ligand. So you can control it. So it's more like the organic molecules and lens they can provide a very good performance for our application. So I will skip the details of these reversible reactions as well. So the last reactions is this we call a several assembly reactions. So if you can control the interaction of this ligand body with some like cations, and then we can control like the aggregation behavior of this methanol cluster. I think I will like, 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 skip the details of this. For example, you can produce the trigonal packing of this methanol clusters. And we have like, like understand the processes. So it's very simple. If there are two clusters, if they want to go together, right? So they need to reach out their hands, right? So they're hanging hand and then the motif will go out and then we'll link together and to form the polymerize and then to form this particular structure of these clusters. Okay, which are time limits. So I will just skip. So I summarize the first part of my talk. And so I'll share you some of our thoughts on like understand the formation and conversion processes of these molecular mo uh, materials, right? Metanol clusters. So if you can design a diff efficient like chemistry, like diversization chemistry, then you can convert our materials right, to the different materials and with uh, very unique functionalities. Okay, so I think this is a uh, first topic. So it's, and and re re recently we have been working on to convert like to to design we call a smart synthesis of this methanol clusters. So I will, I will skip the details of this. So our very simple understanding is, so we already have a very good understand uh, a lab level chemistry insights for a reduction uh, for a total synthesis. So we like to design a smart synthesis platform, we call it in-situ characterization 
data-driven optimization, automatic platform, scalable production, and facade separation and customized functionalization. And then to help us to produce these functional molecules but without the manpower. So we integrate the AI, high throughput processes inside our system. So I will just show you one of our recent developments to, to do this, we call robotic synthesis of uh, metanol clusters. So we can use this uh, robotic synthesis of the systems together with the in-situ characterization techniques and also the AI to try to help us to design this the smart synthesis platform, right? To, to synthesize these molecules, but now without manpower. Okay, so this is um, uh, uh, our current developments. So hopefully after two years, we can have our first platforms to come up. Okay. So this is uh, our, my first topic, we are material synthesis. So I think I still have a very short time. So next I will just spend about 10 minutes and to highlight some of the applications of this metanol cluster. So hopefully uh, after my discussion for the first topic, so I can convince you so this is a uh, molecule materials. And if you have a very good synthetic chemistry, you can precisely control these molecule materials and with a uh, very well control of these uh, physical, chemical, and biological properties. So next, I will just discuss, so what are the properties we are looking for? So what are the biomedical applications? And I will just highlight several developments here. Okay. So for the clusters, and we know it's more like the uh, ligand protected metal nanomaterials. Okay? So the core is the metal and the shell will be the ligands. So it's for our materials. If we want to use these molecules to target for the biomedical applications, so we know the design of the least ligand is very important because this is the, the first layer that will be seen by our biological system, right? Cause our biological system will not see our metal core in our materials, but we'll see this first layer in our materials, right? And so we need to make sure this layer has a very good biocompatibility. And one very simple way to enhance the biocompatibility of this cluster is use the biomolecules, right? So they use the friends for our, or, or in our nature. So we can use our proteins or you can use a DNA, or you can use a peptide, or you can use some a very biocompatible tidal ligands to protect these particular clusters. And then this cluster is more like biomolecules, but they carry a certain number of these metal atoms. They can enhance their biocompatibility. So my group are interested in two type of molecules. So first one is a protein protected gold cluster. So this is a protein molecules. So we have developed a very efficient mixer that can selectively insert a certain number of the gold atoms inside these molecules, that protein, right? This is a BSA. So then this cluster, they can show luminescence. So this is a luminescence protein. So it can light up the luminescence, the, the protein, right? So this the luminescence protein can be used for many applications. Okay. So our recent interest is to develop the peptide protected gold nanocluster. So now the peptide chemistry developments. So you can design a different peptides with a different amino acid functional groups right, or different functions. And then we can use our peptides to precisely control the clusters. Like you have a clusters, you have 15 gold atoms and 13 peptides, 18, 14, 22, 18, 25, 18. It's like the molecules, right? So then these molecules, they have a different molecular properties right so it's, it, it can be it can be used for the biomedical applications as well so besides the molecular formula so for the clusters so they have another very interesting property they call structure they have, have very well defined structure so it's in i five years ago so we, we, we draw a perspective for advanced materials so we have like calling the structure of this the cluster based the enzymatic reactions. Or we can use a cluster to mimic the proteins because they have this 
it's three dimensional structure. So they have this we call a primary structure, like a secondary structure, and tertiary structure. So they have a gold core, right? And we can control a motif, and we can control a ligand on the surface of this cluster as well. Then we can control the properties of this cluster, right? Not simply, like, for example, we can control like catalysis properties as well to mimic the enzymatic reactions, right? So this is one of the key research topic in my group as well. So if like you bring the cluster and the biomolecules together, so you call it a biomolecule protected metanol cluster or bio nano cluster in short, right? So these molecules are very promising for biomedical applications because it integrates the unique properties of the core and the shell, right? So core is metal atoms, metal elements. So, so they're very small, non-toxic. They have some optical properties and also have these are noble matter. They have some unique physical and chemical and also biological properties. So for example, for gold, uh, this is heavy metal. So it shows a very strong radio sensitizing effects. So it can be used as a sensitizer for cancer radio therapy. And for gold and silver, so we have demonstrated we are very uh, efficient antimicrobial agents. So can use to kill the bacteria. So for these particular molecules, the equally important is the share of these clusters. So it's because you need to make sure these share are biocompatible. So you can use the biomolecules, so they can use it, have physiological properties, right? So they can show us a very good biocompatibility and they have a rich surface function you know, groups. They can, they can play with to add on the different functions on the clusters. So for the bio clusters, they have some attractive the bio nano cluster these attractive properties. So for example, they have very well defined size and structure and also surface. So they can be used for different applications. So in the past 10 years, my groups and together with a lot of uh, very nice collaborators. So we are developing like fluorescence probes, some radio sanitizer, and also the antimicrobial agents. So in the next, I will just spend several minutes to highlight some of these applications. So I, as I mentioned, due to the time limits, so I will just skip, skip the detailed parts of this. So first one is for the fluorescent probes. So if you're working on uh, optical probes, so you may, must notice the magic window comes out. Right? So for the active uh, materials, uh, optical materials that are active uh, in uh, near R1 or near R2, so they're very promising because our body will be transparent, right? So we don't have an interference from other molecules. So there are a lot of the uh, interest to develop like the near R2 uh, molecules, right? And go nanocluster is a very interesting near R2 emitting molecules. So we can be excited at near R1, like 808 nanometer. So it shows the emission at 1001 like to 1003 nanometer right, near R2. Then they are very small and they're non-toxic. So it's compared to other type of molecules, they could serve as a very attractive the near R2 right, by imaging probes. So we have the collaboration with the Professor Zhang Xiaodong from Tianjin University to demonstrate this as indeed a very good near R2 imaging probes. So we'll skip the details of this study. So we also uh, collaborate with uh, Professor Song Xiaolong and Professor Chen Xueyan and Professor Yang and, and in Fuzhou and to further develop the uh, cloud near R2 at uh, Gernal cluster uh, for the targeted uh, tumor imaging. And for this particular uh, very small cluster, very nice, uh, it's well defined uh, molecular uh, uh, molecules, right? And it's very, very well defined structure and properties as well. So I will skip the details as well. So the, the second applications and we have been working is the radio sanitizer. So this is for the cancer reader therapy. So I may not need to mention the importance of this cancer reader therapy. So we know every year we have a lot of new cases and radio therapy is a leading cancer treatment approach. So it shows a high efficacy. But the problems for and the radio therapy is you use high energy radiation so you can kill the cancer cells so you will also kill your normal cells right so it has a very strong uh, very serious the side effects so one efficient way is 
to design a radio sand uses radio sanitizer and that can uh, increase the local treatment efficacy. And now we can use a relatively low and safe radiation dose. And now you can you use a relatively low and safe radiation dose. It will not kill your normal cells, but when it arrives at the tumor site, it can be significantly enhanced by radio sanitizer, right? And then it can kill the cancer cells. So there are a lot of studies trying to develop in this uh, radio sanitizer to increase the efficacy of radio therapy and by without causing additional damage to the normal tissues. So for a radio sanitizer, it should have, especially for the inorganic materials based radio sanitizer, it should have a strong radio therapy enhancement, good biocompatibility, tumor targeting, and also for inorganic molecules or materials. And the last one is also important. It may have some efficient renal clearance. So the meaning is, so if this radio sanitizer may sell their function, they will not accumulate inside our body. So we can completely like clear by our body, right? So you may not show this short and long-term detrimental effects. So gold nanocluster particles are very promising radio sanitizers. So we have contributed a review article many years ago and to discuss this gold nanocluster or high atomic number materials. So they may if have a very good sanitizing effect. And then we can also combine with some other molecules and then to further enhance the properties of this uh, gold nanoparticle and gold nanoclusters. So we have been working on this uh, about 10 years ago. So we have a collaboration with a Professor Zhang Xiaodong and to develop what we call a peptide protected gold nanoclusters. So for this cluster, it's more like a polypeptide and then they carry a number of several the gold atoms, right? So it shows the physiological properties of this polypeptide, like the protein, and then physical properties and chemical properties of this core. So it shows a very strong radio therapy enhancement, and it also show very efficient renal clearance because they're very, very small, right? So it's about two nanometer, uh, below three nanometer, a uh, hydrodynamic diameter for these molecules. So we further develop this cluster to a very small one, like we have AU10, 10 gold nano gold atoms and 10 tiny ligands. So this small cluster, they will form a ring-like structure. So they're very stable, and then it shows an uh, improved performance for cancer radio therapy. Okay. So the last like, application I would like to like to highlight is we call a traceable antimicrobial agents. So meaning of traceable antimicrobial agent is like for our mo molecules like clusters. So they, they have a uh, capability to kill bacteria and they also have uh, luminescence properties. And we can use that luminescence property to see how will these molecules kill the bacteria. Right? And then we can design uh, from the understanding, we can design a better antimicrobial agents. So my, my, my PhD and postdoc, the, the past PhD postdoc, Dr. Zheng Kaiyuan, is spending her, all his her PhD and postdoc working on these poly, particular molecules. And she wrote uh, another account and to discuss this traceable antimicrobial agent. So you have interest, you can read these accounts. So it's very simple. If we, for these molecules, if you can control the core of the molecules, surface on this molecule at the atomic level, molecular level, and the composition molecules. And we can also combine with other type of antimicrobial agents or like antibiotics or some of the 2D materials, right? So have some synergistic effects. And then we can use it to develop this, we call traceable antimicrobial agents. So I see I will, I will due to the time limit, I will skip the details of these developments for this like, antimicrobial agents. I will just go to the last slides to summarize our uh, I, I might talk today. So hopefully like, through uh, these presentations and I can convince you these particular molecules is a very promising uh, probes for biomedical applications and also for the pharmaceutical application as well. Because if you have a very efficient synthetic chemistry, so we can precisely synthesize these molecules right, at the atomic level to control the composition, 
size, structure, and surface of all these molecules and to control the physical, chemical, biological properties, right? And then we can cater for the different type of applications. And more importantly, if these, more, these functional materials, they have this very well-defined size structure, and then we can use as a model to understand the interaction of these molecules with the biological system, right? And they can provide some of the very useful information, okay? So hopefully that this is very important size. This can convince you this is a very interesting molecules. So with this, I would like to end my presentation to send my, 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 my students, my postdocs, and my collaborators and the funding agencies. And more importantly, is, uh, it's now the COVID is over, right? So welcome to visit Singapore and thank you very much. So I, if you have questions, and I can ask your questions. Answer your questions. Okay, thank you. Ah, we wait a moment. Behind the back, see if there are any questions. Now, um, it seems like there are not. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Hey, teacher, can you hear me? Can you hear me, teacher? Can you hear me? Ah, okay, okay. 那个刚才听了那个谢老师报告，我感觉就是呃，每次都会有新的内容，呃，而且每次都会有一些新的收获。呃，其实在这个里面，我觉得呃，很多内容都是和药物相关的，呃，包括这个呃，可以模拟的这个相关的这个蛋白，呃，包括这个呃，纳米撮表面呃，修饰的一些肽啊，或者是。这种蛋白分子其实，呃，在我们这个生物药物里面，很多它本身都是具有一定的这个呃治疗或者是生理调节的这个活性的，呃，所以还是呃受益匪浅。嗯、呃，那可以看，呃，刘老师，麻烦看看各平台有没有这个听众的这个问题。对对，现在后台好像还没有问题。也就以后学生有什么问题，可以给我。啊、哦，好的、呃<笑>嗯。嗯，好的，谢老师，我我先问你一个问题。好、啊嗯。我已经多次主持您的这个报告，呃，我已经问了很多问题，我每次都喜欢问一个问题，就是呃，后续的这个，嗯、呃。金属纳米醋的后续的发展，你们的这个想法是？我那个丁老师，我刚才听的不是很清楚，你说是就是后后续的发展是吧？金属纳米醋的发展是吧？嗯，就像我们，哎，对的，对的，对的。如果是我科里组的，想一个就是两个部分，一个就是我们现在在做，就是我们叫 smart synthesis platform， 就是说以后的金属。环处如果它需要应应用的话，你要 scale up 它 system 吧，你要在那个大批量的去生产这种这种高质量的这个金属纳米团处，在原子分子层级可控的。所以我们现在克里组一个很大的一个 development 就是在开发这个整个整个自动化合成，然后去 AI， 然后原位表征手段，然后集成的这个我们叫 smart synthesis platform。这是我们近期就是我自己一些。比较粗浅的这种见识了，就是说这个是我觉得是一个很重要的，就是一个一个一个过程。然后如果是在应用跟跟那个，比如说跟 pharmacy 或者是 biomedical 比较相关的话，现在团处的话，我觉得因为它是一种分子，我们现在就阐述它是个分子材料，其实它并不是并并不完全是纳米，因为它还没有到纳米级别，它是大概是一个纳米左右。那分子材料它有一个，就是说做药物啊，或者是做做一些生物应用，它有一个好处，就是说你可以精确的知道它的分子，是吧？就知道它分子是，可以知道它的分子结构。然后如果精确知道它的分子是或分子结构以后，可能在后面在后面的开发这种药物啊，或者是一些后续的生物应用的话，可能它有一些比较一些独特的一些优势。就是或者是相对就是说比较 unique 的地方，所以这个我觉得在做，比如说做进化二期荧光是吧？然后做一些这个 radio sanitizer 方面，我觉得这是一个很好的很好的一个例子了。然后再做另外一个，我们我们课题组现在想要做的就是就是去做这个团处，比如说你去精确的去调控它的表面。
然后让它有很好的这种催化性质啊。这个催化性质就是你可以去模拟酶嘛，然后这个催化性质跟一般的可能纳纳纳米的纳纳纳米酶。就是就是可能就是就是跟严老师他们那个就是整个纳米酶就是很漂亮的这种这种概念吧，然后可能团数也可以作为其中的一部分，就是说通过调控它表面的 ligand 是吧，然后可以把这个选择性给它提提高上去。所以这是我们克里组这几年也比较感兴趣的一个方向，就是可能都跟团数比较独特的物理化学啊这个性质有关，对。